One question that I had, I was kind of doing some research on some of the other work that you do outside of kind of your day job. Uh -huh. I do a lot of speaking. I know that you've written a book. Um, yes, one specific thing I wanted to ask in regard to your speaking was I know that you have like a 95 five mm -hmm. uh, kind of formula for the top 5% of people and the traits that they have in order to mm -hmm. um, be the best. Uh, I was wondering if you could maybe walk us through those uh, as you know, all of us are kind of rising up the ranks. Yeah. Trying to break into the industry. Well, Dylan, thank you. Um, sure. Yes. It's, it's called the 95 five rule and it's, it's something that I just crafted. I mean, the title's kind of made up, but my point is you've all heard of the 80, 20 rule. Yes. Everybody's heard of the 80, 20 rule. So this is just sort of a takeoff on that. And it's really five things that I think that are easily transferable from the court or the field uh, to the boardroom. Uh, things that all companies can do uh, to really maximize productivity, teamwork, uh, leadership, and those kinds of things. Uh, so it's, it's part of a presentation that I make to, to businesses. Um, and the first is to really have a clear vision of where you want to go. Uh, in sports, it is inconceivable that we would begin a season, uh, a practice without a game plan. Um, that's what we call it in, in sports. And in business, you call it a business plan. You call it a, a, a statement, a, a mission statement. Uh, and that's the beginning. What, what am I all about? What is it that I stand for? What is it that I want to accomplish? Those are the kinds of things. And, and we can spend, you know, a lot of time talking just about those things, but that is, that is paramount uh, to, to what is the vision that you see? What, you know, Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. How do you see this ultimately turning out? You know, for, for a team, it would be, well, we want to get in the playoffs. We want to win the championship. We want, there's some goal that's driving us. We want to have a personal best time. We want, you know, whatever the accomplishment may be in the micro or the macro, that's sort of where this is. So that's got to be number one, have that vision uh, of where you want to go first and foremost for your business and then for yourself. Um, the second one has to do with more of a personal development. What's it going to take me to get there? Uh, and we, we dive in on number two, more of uh, I'm here, uh, take a personal self-evaluation that I'm here. I want to go there. And what do I have to do to get there? And an honest evaluation. Uh, you can't just say, well, I've got a goal. Uh, that's not going to do it. What motivates you to get to that goal? Well, uh, if I'm trying in the sports realm, I'm trying to uh, increase my batting average or my track time or the distance I cover or whatever, whatever the case may be, you know the steps that you have to go through to get there. And that's where coaching comes in. That's where your personal drive and determination come in. But in the business world, you know, you're not really being judged on a clock uh, or a scoreboard. So how do you push yourself? How do you motivate yourself and your team and those people around you to get where you want to go? Well, you establish benchmarks along the way. You have sales goals. You have personal development goals. Like I'm going to read a book a week in my discipline. If I want to learn more about business in this particular discipline, then what can I do? What seminars can I take? What different things can I do to get there um, and measure them and attack them? So, you know, if you do those two things, you know, you're really going to be well on your way. And then three, four, and five are much more how those first two are more inside uh, than outside. But the last three have to do with how then do you take it to the marketplace? You know, in sports, it's the scoreboard. You, you can get feedback immediately as to how, you, how you're doing. In the business world, it's how many no's can you take? How many job applications can you send out there and get rejected and still come back with the same vigor, the same enthusiasm, the same get it done attitude for the next try? One of the things that is, I think, a great challenge 
for you all getting into the marketplace is this. What is going to differentiate me from the other 5,000 people that are applying for the same job? Because as you get ready, Dylan, to graduate, so too are thousands of others in the, with the exact same degree almost, uh, doing the same thing, going after the same, looking at the same job boards and all that stuff. So what's going to differentiate me from everybody else? Well, I think there are a couple of things that you can control. And number one is your interpersonal communication skills. Okay. Now, I come from a very biased background. I will say I'm a broadcaster. I was a speech major. And I'm not saying this to, th to say you got to go out and give speeches and you're going to be on TV. That's not my point. My point is develop your communication skills to the point where you can sit across the desk and back, you remember, you remember when we could shake hands, uh, you know, shake somebody's hand, look them in the eye, right? Remember their name and carry on a conversation, particularly if that person across the desk is the person who's going to hire you or, you know, is the recruiting person to determine whether or not you make the cut of the next round of, of hiring or not. Can you do that? And if you don't feel comfortable in that situation, then you have to do something about it. And again, it's not that you'd ever give another speech the rest of your life, but it is you've got to learn how to talk to people. And one of the things, one of the challenges that you all have faced that I did not have to face and people my age didn't have to face is that we didn't have the phone. We didn't have all this stuff that takes away from that. You know, you, some of you guys would rather text than talk. You know, when's the last time you used your phone to actually talk to somebody? You know, you're texting, you're, you're doing it on Instagram, or you're doing it on Snapchat, or you, you know, whatever. Uh, you're on Twitter, you're doing this. That's not communicating. That's not communicating. You cannot communicate through a text. How many times have you tried to text somebody with an emotional message, and it completely get misconstrued at the other end? Right? It happens all the time because it's, it's a poor way to express emotion. So ditch the texting, learn how to talk. And if you need to brush up on some of this stuff, what you can do, turn that phone around, do a little role playing with yourself at first. And then when you get comfortable, you know, do it with your friends, but turn that phone around, hold it up there and just start talking and then look and record it and then look at it back and say, well, it's pretty good. Uh, not so hot. And, and those are the types of things you want to be able to engage people because you ultimately you have to sell yourself. And if you're going to get into a position where you're going to have to use communication skills in your job, then this is just the start. Um, if you get into sales, if you get into, you know, being a, a team leader and you're up in front of your, your staff or you, say you're in the boardroom and you got to give a presentation or there's five people in the conference room that you got to talk to, You've got to be able to connect and work on those skills. It is so, so crucial. And uh, I think it's something that gets really overlooked a lot. Uh, you know, it's totally overlooked in high school. And unless you really seek it out in college, uh, not much, it's not really talked about a great deal. You know, communications uh, is more about the, uh, the physical doing of a presentation rather than the art of talking and communicating. Take a beginning acting class. You know, can you get up on stage? Can you talk to somebody? Go enroll in Toastmasters. They'll let you give a speech for free. And stand up and talk to the audience. Because here's what happens. If you've never spoken to a live audience before, your eyes are going to see immediately the feedback you're getting from the audience. How many, on these Zoom calls, you've all been on a thousand of them, right? In the last five weeks. And the person who's on the call that you're supposed to be listening to intently is fiddling over here and looking down and looking up and just not looking at the camera. And don't you wonder what the heck's going on, 
Well, what is he checking his email? What, what, what's going on? You've got to be able to engage your audience. Challenging when you've got just the lens in front of you here, but also challenging is when you're standing up in front of a group of people because your eyes are going to give you the instant feedback of whether or not you're engaging them. And trust me, as a public speaker, the last thing you want is to have them zone out on you. If you see somebody reaching for their phone to check what's going on, you've lost them. So this is a challenge and there's only one way to get better at it and that's to go out and do it. And you can do it in a small group setting. You can do it, as I mentioned, with a little bigger, with like a Toastmasters or something like that, but uh, work on your communication skills. It's not too late. Uh, it, will, it will serve you so well uh, in the job market and in ultimately the jobs uh, that you get. You know, unless you're going to be in your parents' home writing code, you probably don't need it. But if you're not and you're going to be out in the marketplace, then this is something that's very, very important that I think it's overlooked a lot. Great. Thank you for that response. Does anyone else have any questions they would like to ask? Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Bob, for joining us today. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you and your family continue to stay safe. We will, and I wish that for you all. Good luck. How many seniors are on the call? Ooh, lots. Okay. Great. Well, good luck. I mean, wow. Are you guys going to have a tale to tell about your senior year, right? Wow. Uh, a friend of mine, a female, uh, Melanie Newman, just got a job as the uh, announcer for the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, she's been working in the minor leagues. I think she's 27 years old. Gets the job. I mean, she's on top of the world. Boom. This hits. I texted her the other day. And I said, uh, call me when you get a chance. I have an idea. So she calls and I said, you should be writing a book. Do a diary day by day. We'll come up with a title, you know, baseball in a bubble, my first year in the big leagues. Oh, you know, something like that. I throw it out there to you guys. You've got your phone. You've got your pictures. You've got, make some notes. What's this like? How, how are you dealing with all this? What... What disappointments have you encountered? Um, you know, for the athletes in the group, you know, how devastating uh, to have this shut down like this. Um, maybe you could start a blog, make sure you have your own website, uh, let your voice be heard. And a great way to do that is to write about your personal experiences and just put it out there, put the content out there, keep churning, get it out there, write well, uh, and put it on a blog, put it on your website, tweet about it, send it out, and, uh, and it'll help you. It'll help you as you learn how to express yourself and, and get into that marketplace because whatever happens, however this ends in the weeks ahead and we start the rollout of our country one more time, it's going to be very, very different. I was on a call last night with a bunch of uh, restaurant and uh, hotel students. Uh, that are getting ready to graduate. Oh my God. Talk about an industry that's stopped cold. I mean, that's it. But as I told them last night, I said, you guys are the ones that are going to figure it out. You are the guys that are going to come up with the new ideas, the fresh perspective that, you know, the old folks haven't thought of. So this is a prime opportunity. Whatever discipline that you may be getting into, uh, this is a great time. And Take advantage of it. You know, we need new ideas and new thoughts, and that'll put you at the head of the class too. And I encourage you to, to produce that content and always be thinking about, you know, your thoughts on this and that and uh, what's my major and what can I talk about and, and get your website, grab your name as a domain name and blog, put a blog on there and go to work and you'll see that you'll